If you're still in need of something to read, here's the story of Bonnie and Clyde. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most egregious crime movies that played fast and loose with historical fact. Did you say 300 for a payroll check? Number 10, The Irishman. A late opus of Martin Scorsese, The Irishman tells the story of Jimmy Hoffa's infamous disappearance. Yeah. Okay. According to the movie, he was killed by a gangster named Frank Sheeran on the orders of crime boss Russell Buffalino. Either way, he's going. The problem here doesn't stem from Scorsese as he nicely adapts Charles Brand's 2004 book, I Heard You Paint Houses. The problem stems from the book itself, its entire conceit that Sheeran killed Jimmy Hoffa is unverifiable. Despite some good evidence that corroborates Sheeran's story, his confession has been doubted by many experts, including Harvard Law School professor Jack Goldsmith. If Sheeran did indeed make the story up, or at least embellished most of the facts, then that would make the Irishman one giant lie. Hoffa disappeared Wednesday afternoon. Now, more than 48 hours later, with no word yet on what happened to Hoffa, police are extremely concerned. Number 9. Pain and Gain Turning a real crime that killed two people into a comedy was probably not the best idea. I can deal with his impotence. I cannot deal with your incompetence. What the? Back in the 1990s, a group of Florida bodybuilders started the Sun Gym Gang, named after the gym they all frequented in North Miami. Their crimes culminated in the kidnapping and murders of Frank Griga and Christina Furton. He fell. The, 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 the thing just hit him in the head when he fell down. Michael Bay turned this tragic story into a dark comedy, and the tone discrepancy serves as one of the film's biggest errors but it's also filled with historical inaccuracies, like adding made-up characters, shortening the much larger in real life gang, and changing some smaller facts, like how Paul Doyle met Frank Riga. The gist is certainly there, but you know what they say, the devil's in the details. Why are you saying I did it? We did it. No, you drove. It's a, it's a good thing, too. You did a good thing. Number eight, The Untouchables. A classic of the mob genre, Brian De Palma's The Untouchables was a huge success upon release. He pulls a knife. You pull a gun, he sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way. Grossing over $100 million and earning four Oscar nominations, it was a big hit with both critics and general audiences, despite its history being riddled with bullet holes. The movie tells the story of the titular Untouchables, who worked to bring down Al Capone in the early 1930s. We can get him on income tax evasion if we can just show that any of the money from the organization's business is going to him. But story is the important word here, as most of the film's events are completely made up for dramatic purposes. Virtually every blockbuster action scene, including the thrilling border raid and the train station shootout, never actually happened. Furthermore, the film greatly glorifies the Untouchables' role in bringing down Capone. Your Honor? We would like to withdraw our plea of not guilty and enter a plea of guilty. <laughs> Number seven, Foxcatcher. Shortly after leaving the office, Steve Carell switched genres and became literally unrecognizable as murderer John DuPont. So the world championships are coming up soon? Yes, sir. I want you to win. That's why you're here. A philanthropist and wrestling enthusiast, DuPont ran Foxcatcher Farm and killed Olympic wrestler Dave Schultz in 1996. Hey, John. What's happening? Hey, whoa. No, John. Do you have a problem with me? The film takes a few notable diversions from the real story, like changing how Schultz met DuPont and having him live in the farm's guest house after moving to Pennsylvania. Furthermore, Dave and his brother Mark never actually lived together on Foxcatcher Farm. How you doing? Good. Good. Uh. And speaking of Mark Schultz, he was none too pleased with how the film turned out, often posting unfavorable reactions online and criticizing the film's depiction of him and his brother. Number 6. Public Enemies If there's one thing the list will prove, it's that you should never trust a Depression-era gangster flick. Let's play a game, Mr. President. It's called Spin the Dial. The Untouchables plays fast and loose with historical fact, as does Michael Mann's Public Enemies. This film uses the story of John Dillinger and Melvin Purvis to tell a grander tale about Depression-era crime and the birth of the FBI. We are pursuing hardened killers. It will be dangerous. And those of you who aren't prepared for that should go. It's a fascinating subject, yet the story is filled with historic nonsense. The deaths of many characters are altered for dramatic purposes, including those of Pretty Boy Floyd, Homer Van Meter, and Babyface Nelson. As for Dillinger himself, the real man didn't kill as many people as he does in the film, and he never actually spoke to Purvis. You act like a confident man, Mr. Purvis. You've got a few qualities. Probably pretty good from a distance. Number 5. Dog Day Afternoon Considered one of the greatest movies ever made, 
Dog Day Afternoon dramatizes the failed bank robbery conducted by John Wadovich and Salvatore Naturelli. Attica! 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 Most of the names are changed for the film, which is fine enough considering its dramatic deviations from the real story. Wadovich was unhappy with how the film turned out, calling it 30% accurate and criticizing its fictional elements. For example, he never actually spoke with his mother during the robbery. I got it all worked out, Listen, Ma, don't worry. I... Even more egregious was the film's insinuation that he betrayed Naturali, a fact that Wadovich vehemently denied. His ex-wife Carmen Bifolco also took umbrage with her portrayal and sued Warner Brothers for invasion of privacy. The lawsuit failed with the court ruling in favor of the movie studio. Talk to me about love. Go ahead. Oh, son, I'm scared. I'm scared. Number four, JFK. Oliver Stone's crime drama has been credited with popularizing the theory that John F. Kennedy was killed in government conspiracy. You know who killed President Kennedy? Was there a conspiracy here in New Orleans? The film takes a firm stance in that regard, and in that way, it becomes a three-hour piece of historical fiction. Its entire thesis is potentially made up, and even though the conspiracy theory is a wildly popular one, it's still a conspiracy theory without a firm basis in fact. A some bullet. Anyone who's been in combat will tell you never in the history of gunfire has there been a bullet this ridiculous. While Oliver Stone's filmmaking was revered and praised, the movie's story received harsh criticism in the press, particularly for its stance that JFK was assassinated by the American government. For many, this was a wildly untrue and perhaps even dangerous assertion to make. The truth is the most important value we have because if the truth does not endure, if the government murders truth, if, it, if we cannot respect the hearts of these people, then this is not the country in which I was born in, and it's certainly not the country that I want to die in. Number three, Argo. Ben Affleck's modern classic concerns the Iran hostage crisis and the resulting Canadian caper that rescued six American diplomats. You want to set up a movie in a week, you want to lie to Hollywood, a town where everybody lies for a living, then you're gonna sneak 007 over here into a country that wants CIA blood on their breakfast cereal, and you're gonna walk the Brady Bunch out of the most watched city in the world. Take notice of that title, Canadian caper. You wouldn't know that watching Argo, which is vehemently pro-America. The film dramatically glorifies the role of the CIA while considerably downplaying the importance of the Canadian government. Since the incident, the number of guards at the airport has doubled. Thorough background examinations should be expected. This criticism was directly made by many prominent individuals of the time. For example, Canadian Ambassador Ken Taylor called the CIA a junior partner in the operation, and former President Jimmy Carter admitted that 90% of the plan was Canadian. Even the postscript text needed to be altered in post, as it insinuated that Taylor did not deserve credit for the operation. This couldn't be further from the truth. We get caught, you and Pat go on trial for harboring the enemy, you know that. Pat and I have discussed it, it's the risk we took. Number two, Bonnie and Clyde. Arguably the most important crime film ever made. Bonnie and Clyde received 10 Oscar nominations and shocked audiences with its groundbreaking depictions of graphic violence. This afternoon we killed a man and we were seen. Now so far nobody knows who you are, but they know who I am, they're gonna be running after me and anybody who's running with me. Come for its importance in cinema history, not for its realistic depiction of the titular duo. Like their famous car, the film is absolutely riddled with holes. These aren't just minor details, but major deviations that significantly alter both story and character. Bonnie and Clyde never sent photos to the media, and Frank Hamer did not have a personal vendetta against the duo. Big old Texas Ranger waves his gun at us, and we just welcome him like he was one of our own. He hadn't even met them before the famous execution. Speaking of that, Clyde never realized that they'd been trapped, as he was killed instantly with a shot to the head. Hey, isn't that Malcolm there? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Catch Me If You Can. One of Spielberg's more grounded films, Catch Me If You Can, relays the literally unbelievable story of con man Frank Abagnale. Um, I'm a co-pilot based out of San Francisco. I flew a flight into New York last night, but the problem is I'm headed out to uh, Paris in three hours. The problem is that the story is based on Abagnale's own self-written memoir, meaning we have to take his word as gospel. As it turns out, we were the victims of Abagnale's greatest con. Pretty impressive resume, Dr. Connors. Well, unfortunately, uh... The only thing I need is a, an emergency room supervisor for my midnight to 8 a.m. shift. Doubts have been raised about the book's veracity since 1978 when reporters debunked his claims of being a Louisiana prosecutor. But the biggest bombshell came in 2020 when journalist Alan Logan found evidence that contradicted most of Abagnale's stories. 
His tall tales are either made up or wildly exaggerated, meaning the entire film is a work of pure fiction. Who are you to, who are you to say something like that, huh? Which inaccuracy set off your inner historian? Let us know in the comments. We're all lies, you know. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.